Yeah, this, this is a very popular time of year. Uh, there's an old saying that when the dogwoods bloom, the paddlefish are running, and, and that holds true pretty much every year, these paddlefish. Uh, they start staging in February, and as they get the rainfall, then they start moving uh, up and up, stage up, and when they get that really big warm rain, then they shoot up a, a new spawn. So this time of year is always a good time of year. You could you, you could catch them probably year round, but uh, the way that works is they're pretty distributed through the lake uh, during most of the year, and then long about uh, January 1st to February 1st they start kind of migrating and schooling up, and then uh, then they really start staging in February March. They start staging in the upper end of, of the lake. It makes it, they're a lot more concentrated, so it's a lot easier to catch. There's several different methods. Uh, one's just from the bank, snagging. There's also snagging and, and pulling that rod through when you're out on a boat. There's also, that they've got pretty good at locating those fish, at, at what depth they are, and just trolling through and, and making sure their hook is at that level to snag them as they go through, which is a lot less work than the old bank snagging. So We do have a pamphlet. It's one of those things that we were able to buy with uh, the profits from last year. And that, it helps the new anglers as well as the old anglers. One, it has our phone numbers if they have any questions or they want to call us and, and see how the spoonbill are running and things like that. But uh, it also, the new anglers, gives them a lot of good information on where to fish and how to catch them and things like that. And, uh, they can get them here, they can get them at local bait dealers, they can pick it up at our office in Jinx. Uh, there's several places they can pick up copies of it. Two years ago we were able to start implementing, because of this program, uh, a permit system. So now to fish for paddlefish in the state of Oklahoma you have to have a, a permit. The permit is free, it doesn't matter how old or or young you are, you still have to have that permit. It, it's free, but that's what the number that you attach to your fish. You can use duct tape, whatever method you have, but after you catch that fish and, and take possession of that fish, then you have to get your permit number on that fish. There's three ways that you can get it here. One by boat. If you're out snagging uh, for your fish, and say there's four in your party and you're in a boat, two of you have already caught your fish and you're working on the other two, uh, we have a boat, a couple of boats running out there. You can transfer that fish to us. Uh, we'll give you a number and a receipt for your fish, and we'll bring those two fish up and already process them. So when you come off the water with your other two, uh, you can already your two fish are already be worked up and waiting for you in a cooler here. Uh, if you're a bank angler uh, up at uh, down at Connors Bridge or up at Miami Park, uh, we have a truck there that, as you catch it, it'll pick it up and bring it back here for processing. Uh, so there's a couple ways you can get it to the RPC, or you can just bring it yourself. A lot of people enjoy coming up here and, and uh, seeing the other anglers, see what they've caught and things like that. So. It, when we take possession, it gets a unique number, uh, and that unique number follows that fish clear through the process. Uh, the object of this whole, pro whole research process center is to do research on these paddlefish. Uh, in the past, I've done a lot of tagging and releasing to look at the population. But I wasn't getting at what I needed to get at with this population. So in order to do that, I'd have to kill a lot of paddlefish. And there was no need in that. Our anglers already harvested these fish. So uh, they turn into the data collectors. And for that, we'll fly that fish for free for them. Uh, and return it in a very nice package back to them. But the fish comes in, we take some initial data, we take the uh, length, we take the weight, uh, we take a jaw. Uh, that jaw, we'll take it back to our lab, we'll cut it very thin with an isometric uh, saw, and we're able to look at the growth rings in it, just like you would a tree to how old that fish is. And fish goes in, it's played on the rail, uh, it is then passed down a line and where it is skinned and the red meat's taken off, and then washed and cleaned and then bagged and, and then comes out to the angler uh, or into the cooler waiting on the angler to get here. You have, you have 24 hours to come pick that filet up, so if you don't make it in that evening, you'll still be here tomorrow. When we went to OSU and originally looking at this project, uh, we were looking at different ways to filet that fish and clean that fish, and one of those turned out to be a skinner that they use on hams out in the hog processing. 
And that has worked tremendously well for us and speeds it up. We can now run a fish through in, in two minutes. If, if the fish they bring in is a mature female and has eggs, uh, then we'll remove those eggs from the fish. They're passed over through a, a pass-through cooler uh, and then screened and processed into caviar to help pay for the project, the research project. As I, I mentioned, it's a very expensive project and takes some funding. And if there's anything left over, then we'll, we'll return that back to our anglers uh, in the form of boating fishing access, uh, information, added law enforcement, etc. Turn it to auto, I'm sorry. Okay. One, two, three. Did you do it? I don't know, do another one. Just making a zooming in and out noise. That ought to do it. If you push the button, it ought to do it.